What's up, you freaking genius ads? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to graph cube root functions. Okay, and the nice thing about cube root functions is that you can take the cube root of positive and negative numbers, right? And the other thing you wanna keep in mind are your perfect cubes. And here's a little list of them. So 0, 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, and so on. Okay, so all these numbers are numbers that we can easily take the cube root of, right? So we wanna try and include these numbers. All right, so let's do this first example right here. So we have f of x is equal to the cube root of x minus four. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is just make a little x, y table. Now we're gonna plug in some numbers for x and remember you wanna use perfect cubes. So in this case, we can use negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and positive eight, okay? Why did I specifically choose these numbers? Well, first of all, these are all perfect cubes, right? And also, these are some of the easiest perfect cubes that you can evaluate, right? Because they're smaller numbers. And also, if you notice uh, the pattern, it's symmetrical, right? So I have a negative 8 and a positive 8 on the outsides, right? We have a negative 1 and a positive 1. And then we just have the 0 in the middle, okay? So whenever you have just an x inside of your cube root, these are generally the numbers you're going to want to use and exactly in this order, okay? So let's plug in these values for x and see what we get for y, or I guess more specifically, f of x, right? But same thing, all right, so then, let's see, if we plug in a negative eight into this equation right here, we're gonna get that f of x is equal to the cube root of x, which is negative eight minus four, right? And then this next one is gonna be equal to the cube root of negative one minus four. This one's equal to the cube root of zero minus four, this one's equal to the cube root of positive one uh, minus four. And then lastly, this is equal to the cube root of positive eight minus four, okay? So then coming up here, let's see, the cube root of negative eight is equal to negative two. So negative two minus four is equal to negative six, all right? Here, the cube root of negative one is negative one. So negative one minus four is equal to negative five. Here, the cube root of zero is just zero. So zero minus four is equal to negative four. And the cube root of one is just one. So one minus four is equal to negative three. And the cube root of positive eight is two. So two minus four is equal to negative two, okay? So here are our y or f of x values, right? So negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, and negative two. Okay, so to graph this, let's see. Our x values, the, the smallest one is negative eight, the biggest one is positive eight. Okay, so there's positive eight and negative eight. And then for y, it goes from negative six to negative two. All right, there's our negative values. So then these are the coordinates that we're going to plot, right? So negative eight, negative six, negative eight, negative six is right here. Negative one, negative five, right? Negative one, negative five is right there. Zero, negative four, right there. 1, negative 3, 1, negative 3, it's right there. And then 8, negative 2, 8, negative 2 is right there. Okay, so then you'll see that our graph goes like that, right, in both directions. Okay, so all of your cube root graphs are always going to look something like that, okay? Or it might go in the other direction, basically, like that, okay? And the domain and range are going to be really nice because the domain, remember those are your x value limits and the range are your vertical or your y value limits. So the domain goes from, well, you can see it just goes in this direction forever, right? Negative infinity and in this direction forever to positive infinity. So it's always gonna be all real numbers and that's the symbol for all real numbers. And then the range, well, you can see it's gonna go basically down in that direction and it's going up in that direction forever, right? So the range is the same thing. It's all real numbers, right? So the domain and range are always gonna be the exact same thing for all of your cube root functions. All right, so here we have y is equal to negative uh, cube root of x minus one plus seven, okay? So the first thing we can do here again is make an x, y table. Now, this problem is different from the first one, right? Because here we're taking the cube root of not just x, but we're doing x minus one, right? So we can't just plug in negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. 
what you have to do in this case, whenever you have x plus or minus some other number, is just set this equal to those perfect cubes. So in this case, we're gonna say x minus one is equal to negative eight. We're gonna say x minus one is equal to negative one. x minus one is equal to zero. x minus one is equal to positive one. And x minus one is equal to positive eight, okay? Now here to solve for x, uh, well, the first one we're going to add one to both sides, right? So those cancel out. So then here we get x is equal to negative eight plus one, which is equal to negative seven, right? So that's gonna be our first x value for our xy table here, negative seven. Then uh, for this next one, we're gonna add one again to both sides. Those cancel out. So we get x is equal to negative one plus one, which is equal to zero. So we're gonna plug in the zero right there. And then here we have uh, again, same thing, just adding one to both sides. Those cancel out, so we get x is equal to positive one. Here, uh, again, adding one to both sides. Uh, there we go. So then we get x is equal to positive two. And then lastly, adding one right to there. So we get x is equal to eight plus one, sorry, which is equal to positive nine, okay? So these are the x values that we need to use. Okay, so you're gonna see when we use these x values, it's gonna be easy to evaluate this cubed root, okay? And the other thing I want to point out is, notice how I still kept what we wanted symmetrical, right? Negative eight, positive eight, negative one, positive one, and then zero in the middle. Okay, so let's evaluate our x values. So first of all, if we plug in a negative seven into this equation, we're gonna get y is equal to negative cube root of x minus one, so negative seven, minus one and then plus seven, all right? So then this next one's gonna be equal to negative cube root of zero minus one plus seven. This is gonna be equal to the negative, uh, whoops, cube root of one minus one plus seven. This one's gonna be equal to the negative cube root of two minus one plus seven and lastly, this one's equal to the negative cube root of nine minus one plus seven. Okay, so starting with the top one, this is gonna be equal to negative, and then negative seven minus one is equal to negative eight, so the cube root of negative eight is negative two, right? So then this is gonna be equal to negative two, and then we still have our plus seven right there, right? Plus seven. And then this is gonna be equal to negative, right, negative, uh, the cube root of zero minus one. So zero minus one is equal to negative one. So the cube root of negative one is just equal to negative one, right? So then we just have, I'll put an orange actually, negative one, and then plus seven at the end. Then this one right here is negative, right? Then one minus one is zero. So the cube root of zero is just zero. So then we just have a zero right there and then plus seven at the end. Here we have uh, negative, cube root of two minus one, two minus one is equal to one, so the cube root of one is equal to one, and plus seven, and then lastly, negative, and then the cube root of nine minus one, nine minus one is equal to eight, so the cube root of eight is equal to positive two. All right, so then we have positive two and then plus seven. Okay, so then evaluating this one more time, a negative times a negative is a positive, so here we have positive two plus seven, which is equal to nine, here, positive one plus seven is equal to eight. Here, negative zero is just zero, so zero plus seven is equal to seven. Negative one plus seven is equal to six. And negative two plus seven is equal to positive five. Okay, so here are our y values, right? Nine, eight, seven, six, and five. Nine, eight, seven, six, and five. Okay, now I'm gonna delete some of this to make some room for our precious graph right here. Okay, so our x values go from negative seven to positive nine. Okay, there's negative seven, there's negative nine, and then our y values go from five to nine. All right, so there's nine. So first we're gonna graph negative seven, nine. So negative seven, nine is right there. And then zero, eight, so zero, eight would be right there. One, seven, so one, seven is right there. Uh, two, six, right, two, six is right there, and then nine to five, right? So then nine and then five, right there-ish. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, and then again, we're just gonna connect the dots. Here's our little jog, 
right? And that's why we graph these symmetrically, our X values, right? Boom, 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 and there's your graph. And the domain and range, again, for all of these are always all real numbers. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.